Hey, what's up guys? My name is Moda and welcome back to the Mining Stacker YouTube channel. So in case you haven't heard, GPU mining is dead again, meaning there are big opportunities here. Okay, so it's not as bad as after the ETH merge and those three months after. The sentiment feels that way, but realistically we're not there yet. But the same type of opportunities are starting to appear. Okay, you've heard in videos where it's talking about, oh, we did these 10, 20, 30, 40 X's all last year. Those kind of opportunities are coming back. So even though profitability is in the dumpster, opportunity is nearing all time highs, right? Especially if things do get worse. So again, I'm not a bear, but I do want things to get worse so I can accrue more, so I can buy more, so I can mine more. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about specifically what I mean when I say that, specific examples and specific examples that I have done and not just in GPU mineable coins, but also other coins because there are dips in the entire market and this is an extremely good opportunity which may get better right so i'm not necessarily going all in but i'm definitely starting to go in right so i'll give you examples and we'll talk about it here all right so if that sounds good guys stay tuned let's get to this thing so before we fully get started none of this is financial advice and we're not saying this is good advice and do not buy the coins that i'm buying i'm just sharing what i am doing and the reason I am doing so. Okay, so a lot of this channel, because you haven't got the hit, is based on strategies. Okay, why? Because that is what has made me the most amount of money with the least amount of hardware, the least amount of fiat. The upside potentials here are extremely good and things are starting to look like what they were not too long after the ETH merge. Sentiment wise, definitely, realistically, it's not that bad. Again, like I mentioned, though, hopefully it does get that bad. So the opportunities just get even bigger, right? So a big part of what, what's going on is everybody's freaking out because currently the market is going down. Why? BTC is going down. Sentiment's down. Everything's kind of down. Realistically, is it that horrible? No. Again, everybody wants to focus on the short term. Again, zoom out. This is where we're at compared to a year ago, right? So... Things are looking bad. They can definitely get worse. And like I mentioned, again, I'm not a bear, but in this case, I kind of do hope they get worse. I hope we do go below 59. I hope we do go mid 50s. I hope we go upper 40s, right? Because those are different price points that when BTC hits those price points, alts are going to get hit hard. So I do have specific examples. Like when BTC hits those points, I'll be buying another amount. Goes another 20%, I'll be buying another big amount. If we dip into the 40s, high 40s, I will probably go pretty close to all in on some of these alts. Okay, so everybody has specific numbers. I'm not saying that those are good numbers. I'm just saying that's what I look at. Okay, and as far as GPU mineable coins, I know everybody's all doom and gloom. GPU mining is dead. Uh, opportunities are here, bros. Okay, so like when we're talking about that, there's all these examples where we hit like 10, 20, 30, 40 X's. It was during these times. Okay we're not even fully there yet right mining actually is still profitable we're still not even at the point where we're at a loss there's still a ton of coins that are still in profit so it's definitely not as bad as what it was near the ETH merge where literally everything was unprofitable not just break even unprofitable okay certain coins were break even they stayed break even pretty much the entire time but the majority of coins were at a pretty good loss okay so like I've mentioned before, and this is not going to be an argument whether mining versus buying, as I have said many, many times in many, many videos, there are times when one is more advantageous to the other. I definitely do both. And that's another thing. You can do both, right? Everybody likes to make the argument one way or the other. I 100% do both, but there's times when I do one more than the other, okay? In this case, the buying opportunity for me is flashing pretty hard. Okay, I'm going to give specific coins, specific examples. Again, I'm not saying to buy these coins. It's totally up to you on that end. This is just what I look for. The first one we're going to talk about, Nexa. Nexa is pretty close to their lows. Okay, so in general, if you're looking for a good low to kind of like dictate like, oh, is it a good buy or not? The entire market for the most part was in a pretty good low october of 23 okay throughout that month pretty much everything was at a low gpu mineable coins d pin coins proof of shit coins top 100 coins 
that is a good time to look at in comparison to see if it's a good deal or not. Okay, to see where it was recently. In this example, Nexa is in that same exact range that it was during that month. So for me, that is huge because a lot of them had an extreme run up in November, December, including Nexa. Okay, but it has retraced all the way back down. A lot of the other coins have gone up and yes, they've gone down a good amount, but they're still up tremendously from where they were at that point. Okay, so the fact that this one made it back down and if we look at the all time chart again, and next it goes farther back than this, but this is all they have is from January 23. It is at the lowest. Okay, so even if it just reaches the bear market high. Okay, this is not factoring in when we go into the bull market or, you know, spring 2025, summer 2025. This is just the bear market high. Okay, it's going to be a 9x from here. Okay, so for me, pretty extreme potential. Okay, this is one of those that has the potential 9x if it just reaches that. And then from there, going into the bull market, again, it doesn't even have to like do amazing things. It can be a mid tier coin its whole life. Just from that alone though, can go up significantly more. Will it, who knows? But again, it's one that I have researched, I've looked into for a long time, and this is one of those that was definitely gonna be a bull market hold for me as far as the GPU mineable coins go. And again, for my portfolio as a whole, the only real coins out of the top like two, 300 that I've invested in and that I'm not only mine, but that I'm invested in period, are GPU mineable coins. And it's just because of the massive gains that we had last year. Okay, it's for me, again, this for me has worked tremendously. Doesn't even take a lot of capital. And that's the amazing thing with this is that if you get in this early when the market cap is this small, because again, their market cap is down to it's under 22 million. Okay, it's ranked, it's out of the top thousand now. Okay, so a lot of potential here. And then as far as like mining versus buying and all that, to me, I'm definitely mining. But again, I'm on the small scale. So when I see these opportunities, when we get to the point where things are break even or at a loss, as we saw last year, that was kind of like the indicator, like, oh, it might be a good time to actually stack up beyond that. So again, I'm mining with my limited amount with my little 10 cards. And then I'm adding on top of that. OK, because at this point, you're kind of at the same level where you can dictate your hash rate, because whether you have 10 cards or a thousand cards, if it's break even or at a loss, you're on the same scale, right? It's it's a pretty good opportunity here. Okay, so again, it's totally up to you. You can decide what to do. It's up to you to decide like how much to purchase, right? That's totally up to you also. The way I kind of dictated it, like when I've done it in the past, was like, okay, I have my little 10 card rig, or let's say you have a 16 card rig, whatever you have, right? In this case, I put 16 cards up here, I took my power and my mega hash, throw it on what to mine, and you kind of see how much it's gonna cost you an electric to get that much yield, right? So after one month, it'd be about 139 bucks. So the way I looked at it in the past was, okay, let me get six months worth, let me like lock it in right now. So the advantage with doing that, it's like you're mining six months worth at this current yield, at this current price, this current difficulty, and you're kind of locking it in. Because let's say you're in the mindset like, no, I'm definitely not going to buy them. I'm going to have my 16 cards. I'm only going to mine it. Okay, so in two months, let's say the price goes up. Let's say everything goes up. The amount of yield goes down. Okay, because what happens when the price goes up? Everybody wants to jump on. Difficulty goes up. Your yield goes down. You're going to not necessarily lose out significantly, but you're not going to be able to get as many coins. Okay, the opposite can also happen, though. Okay, so this is where you have to kind of like look at the opportunity and see if it makes sense to you. Like, but for me though, looking at based on previous price action, the fact we're at lows, there's a lot more upside, even in the just these bear market highs, it's a lot more upside. And if the price goes lower, price goes down another 50%, I'll buy another bag, right? It goes down another 50%, I'll buy another allotment. Okay, and that's just how it goes. I just see that there's so much more potential upside, okay? So again, it's totally up to you. Another one that kind of falls in the same case that's going on currently is Radiant. Okay, as we look at their all-time log, this one doesn't go as far back either. Oh, this one does actually. So this one, it does go back to like October 22, which is the first time I had bought some, and I did it with the same exact mindset. 
Okay, I was like, okay, I'll buy something. In this case, I only bought like 200 bucks worth. Those 200 bucks, by the time spring happened, I didn't sell up here. Would have been nice to hold up there, but I sold around this time right here. And this is actually back in April, and that's the money I actually used to buy my FPGAs. That's what I used to buy that little malt miner and that E100 was the profits from that. Those $150 that I invested back then when it was early turned into those two things. Which oddly enough, even though again it wasn't a coin I was necessarily super bullish on, I ended up mining the same amount of coins that I used to buy those things, right? Which at the time was a million coins. So a million coins only was only like 150, 60 bucks at that time. Okay, that's how much it went up. But again, it's the same kind of thesis. I was like, ah, I'll buy a little bag right now. It's super low, has potential. Market cap is tr extremely tiny, but has a good community, has good things. We'll see what it does. Is it one that I was necessarily bullish on that, oh, there's going to be a, definitely a top 100 coin? No, not at all. Right? And like I mentioned, they don't necessarily have to be, even with Nexa. I'm pretty bullish on it. I think it'll crack the top 300. Hopefully, maybe it does even better than that. Again, I try to be more conservative, but let's say it even just stays, goes into the top 500. I think it's going to do extremely well. Okay, obviously there's an the opportunity that does go beyond that, and that would be nice, but whether it does or doesn't, we'll see. Um, Radiant, the main case, is the price is low, but the cost to mint currently changed freaking drastically, right? Two things happened. The biggest thing, the having number one, and then number two was actually even a harder hit, was this freaking, <laughs> this freaking supposed potential either FPGA, ASIC farmer, what it is. I know everybody argues what it is. To me, it's FPGA. But regardless of what it is, this freaking entity has taken over the network, which it's kind of funny, though, because you see people who aren't really into mining, people who are into radiance, talking about, oh, yeah, look at the hash rates at all-time high. This is pretty bad, bros. This is pretty bad that it's not just one pool, right? So on top of the chance of a 51% attack, and it's not just because it's one pool. It's literally one entity that's on that pool. It's one person has essentially hijacked the network. Okay, that is not good. This is not good at all whatsoever. Okay, maybe things get worse for it. Maybe it, who freaking knows? Maybe this can be a catalyst for them to consider to stay GPU mineable because again, their big thing is like decentralization and all this and the, what's the number one way to decentralize is be on GPUs, right? Or be ASIC resistant, FPGA potentially resistant. But it's insane, dude. It is insane that this dude has taken over the network and is like literally smashing every block, right? You can see his address here. And as we look through the blocks, literally he is getting every single block. Like you can go down the list. You can match up the miner. You can look at the blocks, 960, 59, 58, 57, 56, 55, 54, 53, 52. Like he's literally getting every block. No bueno right so we'll see how long this lasts like i don't know if he's just going to be on here for a few more weeks if he's going to stay on but like the fact that he's on here and let's say they do unplug okay if we look at the stats i mean everything is going down pretty dramatically it's pretty insane you can see here that everybody else is on a downtrend all the gpus are like man this is because it's a drastic change right so pre-having i was getting about three thousand rxd now it's down to like 500, right? Literally in the day. The halving happened and this dude jumped on right after the halving. It's crazy, right? So we'll see what happens there, but as far as price goes, pretty good opportunity here, okay? Same kind of potential, super tiny cap, break number 1,151, 16 million opportunities here, okay? So it's up to you though, whether you think it's, good or not but like these are the types of things again i look at when i'm like determining that a great example of all of this and probably my best dub today and i don't think anything is ever going to beat it was the same exact thing that we're talking about here with caspa the difference with caspa though it did turn into a legit coin okay it's this is one we got into extremely early Again, everybody makes the argument, mining versus buying, and this way is better, this way is better. Again, I can only speak to what has worked for me. And this strategy has been, this is the best example. Okay, for any guys who caught any of those early first videos I did, this is what I talked about, and this is the exact same thing, right? I'm essentially just rehashing what I talked about 
back then because again I started my channel right after the ETH merge because nobody was making content and like you can even watch those videos like I was explaining it I was like man this is actually the most exciting time in a long time because before it was just ETH 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 like there was not nothing else to look at and to me and I will still say it that was the most fascinating time to mine since I've been in the game which again I'm fairly new I've been about like three and a half years now but that was extremely fascinating time, right? So this is when we bought. We bought in October 22 on that dip, okay? Same exact strategy that I just told you with the Nexa. The difference here though, not saying that Nexa is gonna do this either. Like don't get that part twisted. This one turned into a, like a legit coin, which at the time I was bullish on it because that was my niche, right? That's a big part of, part of the reason I was into Kadena. Scalable, fast proof of work to me was gonna be a big narrative. Okay, and so that's why I was so big into Kadena. So I'm still into Kadena. I still think they are going to do well. Which one is arguably more potential? Casper. Okay. So, again, same exact strategy. And during this time, I bought $400 worth. Okay, because give or take with my little 12 card rig, that's what I'd be able to get in like six months. I was like, you know what? We had a little dip. Things are looking good. Yield is good, et cetera, et cetera. Like everybody talks about mining during this time, but if I would have just kept mining it during that time, I wouldn't have crewed anywhere near the amount that I could have just purchased, right? Because that was an opportune time. And that's the key thing. This is opportunity. So at that time, $400 bought 200,000 Casper. Okay. So again, this wasn't like it was a crazy dip where it just went to that point. It was in this range that whole month. Okay. And it just went up massively. So again, do I think Nexus is going to do this? No. Right? Does it need to do that to get like a pretty good gain? No. Does it have the potential to potentially do something like this? Maybe. I'm not that bullish on it where I think it's going to crack even the top two, three hundred. Hopefully it does. Hopefully it goes beyond that. But again, my bull market, that's why like if you watch those early videos, dude, my videos in the spring, like by January, by the time we hit two cents, I was already like, it already hit my bull market price <laughs> because it did. At that point, it was already 10x. So just to give you a figure where the price is currently at, again, everybody's panicking because, oh, Casper's dead because it's at 10 cents. That's a 50x. And again, that's from October 22. That's not even early. That's not even what like, so was talking about it back here. Okay. I waited for a while, kept my eyes on it, waited for a dip. I got that dip in October and that's when I did finally purchase them. Okay, so it's just a reference point. I'm not saying again that that's going to happen with any of these, but that's the type of opportunity that you can potentially have that you can necessarily get with just full blown mining, right? But again, I'm not saying one's better than the other. There's just opportune times where one you may want to do on top of mining. Okay, and for me, for like Nexa, for example, looking at it could potentially be one of those times. Okay. Um, another one that I've heard uh, people like buying and DCing into, shout out to Crewman, I've heard him mention this a few times, was Alephium, that he's DCing and stuff into Alephium because of the ASICs coming. So I do agree that it will eventually go up, but I don't think necessarily it ha means that it's going to have to happen short term wise. Because I know the concept is like, okay, you know, they want to sell these ASICs, they want to have the profitability crazy. The thing, because it's such a gain, the price doesn't need to be high to do that. The price can actually, as a matter of fact, continue to plummet from here because as we've said before, this is one of those coins that went up massively. So this is a good contrast to looking at the next example where we look at the October prices where Nexa is back to those October prices. Alephium is nowhere near that, okay? Alephium, for example, was in the teens. It was 18 cents. As low as like 12 cents, I think was the low. Yeah, 12 cents here. Currently at two bucks. Okay, so this is a very good contrast that there's potential for it to continue to go down. It has such a massive run up, it may potentially go down. Will it? Probably not. I think there's a lot of hype, a lot of potential here. It's an extremely solid coin, like we've mentioned. But for me, it's kind of the opposite here, right? A lot of the upside has been had already, right? Can it do another 10, 15, 20 X? Sure. But it's already done one. <laughs> <laughs> so like for me this is one i wouldn't be buying okay and the reason i'm saying that the asic pump doesn't need to happen is that it's already going to be so profitable okay if we look at the alf box 
just for easy math purposes, let's say a big boy does come out. Let's say the Bitmain unit comes out. We know they're like 3,000, 3,500 watts. This guy is only 180 watts. Okay, let's, for easy math purposes, let's 20 exit. Okay, because at 20 X, that's at 3,600 watts. Real is probably gonna be a little more efficient. It'll probably put us in that range. Even with this current price point, if we 20 X the revenue what's, that it's gonna make, that's $800 a day, bros. Okay, so that's already an insane number that again, even if it goes down to a dollar, even if a lithium goes 50% from here, that's still $400 a day when that thing launches. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily need to go up. Obviously, if it goes up, it's going to look even better. If volume goes low, then yes, it's not going to take much liquidity to, for it to go up. But it doesn't necessarily have to because it's already going to be an astronomically high number. Okay, so... I know some people have been buying it with that concept like, oh, short term wise, next month when it happens, it's going to two, three X. It may, and hopefully it does, right? But it doesn't necessarily have to because, again, the number's already going to be stupid looking because it's just going to be such a big jump, okay? So just something to consider there. As far as other coins, these are, again, I'm not saying these are good coins. I'm not saying to buy these coins. This is just coins that I'm actually buying, Okay. Reason being, I don't have much of it, so I'm just adding new bags. Okay, so I'm slowly building. So in terms of what I look for, again, this is one that's already pumped a good amount, but this is just one I'm bullish on that I think is gonna do well, right? Is it down to these lows? No, but it is a newer coin. This is actually just when it launched. Okay, but this is one that as we go back, as we look at that previous dump, it did recover extremely fast. Okay, so I did buy some when it went down here, went it down to eight bucks pretty much the next day was at 10 11 bucks okay so overnight recovered 20 30 percent another one was injective it did buy initially on the wick when it went down to 20 bucks so they're currently still not down there i'm actually am waiting for them to go down there i'll probably buy some in the next day or two depending on where things look like right now i'm waiting for that fomc meeting just to see if things go down a little bit further but these are times and these are coins that I'm just looking at, okay? And they're coins that have recovered well. Another one was Beam. Did go down here, went back up to, let's go back on the seven day, or let's go back at the previous dump. So again, went down to 0 0.022, back up to 0 0.03 fairly quickly, okay? So those are kind of what I'm saying. You know, there's a lot of data points when we have these dumps. That's what I kind of look for. Which ones recover quickly, which ones just stay sideways or continue to do worse. Those are different things. So the different niches I'm in, that's where I'm going, right? And currently I do have some more play money just cause with that CKB pump that happened, I don't know if you guys saw that post when I took profits, it's what I'm using, right? So that's the reason we take profits is if you think that it's extremely overbought or oversold, you can go into different coins, right? A lot of, I'm into a lot of these gaming coins. And again, there's a lot of good lows right now. A lot of these coins did pump up a lot, but these are where I'm like nibbling at and kind of just secretly hoping for BTC to go down further just so we can get really good price points to really, really come in going. Whether it happens or not, who knows? Maybe this is the, we just bounce off of 59.5 again and we're back in the same range. That's also potential. And then as far as GPU mineable coins, there is potential here also. Okay, some of the others to look at. Dynex is another one, because again, it's at 46 cents, even just recently, back in March, it was near $1.20. Okay, so again, another one, and this is one that has the AI play, the DPIM play, market cap is small again, it's at 41 million, rank number 732. Chlor AI is another one that had the thing, and these are just examples of coins that we had also purchased that we're talking about oh we got all these big gains because we bought down here when sentiment is where like where gpu mining is currently okay these were the opportune times when it was like i had bought some at 10 cents i didn't get any down here but i did buy a 10 when it hit a dollar once i hit that 10x mark that's when i dumped all of it right so do i hold any right now nope will i probably hold some in the future most likely going to start mining it pretty soon right so We'll see. Again, it's not at all time lows. It's not at these like super duper lows, but it is at a good price point. Chlor was another one that was like a massive gainer. Again, during these boring times or GPU mining is dead times, those were the times to stack and accrue. And then hopefully we do get those pumps, right? Did I think we we're going to get pumps like these? 
no, but we did, right? So again, if that was your niche, you were in the AI niche, I know like DJ Minds was a big proponent for it, made out extremely, extremely well. Okay, one that I did get in, I got in quite a few of these, but again, they weren't like high conviction plays. So although yes, the percentage I made out was extremely well, like this is another one we bought back here and we sold up here. The problem is this wasn't a super high conviction play, so like 200 bucks only gets you so far, right? But 200 bucks can turn into 2,000 bucks fairly quickly, right? And those are the kinds of opportunities that you may wanna see. So again, this is also wasn't another one that was in a long-term hold. Our big play here was the emissions reductions that were happening every 10 days. That was a big part of the reason we were bullish on it. But once it hit that 10X part, I was like, <laughs> and the good thing we did, right? So again, this is another one we'll be watching, we'll be keeping our eyes on. But again, it's just a reminder that these are the opportune times when things are low, when GPU mining is dead and sell all your cards and you're dumb. Those are those kind of signals, right? And I was making fun of that comment the other day and everybody's entitled to their opinion, but again, to me, it doesn't phase me. I find it funny just because, again, I started my channel during that time where you mentioned the word GPU mining and literally all the comments were that. Okay, and again, we're not even at break even yet, let, let alone a loss. Okay, at, during those times, like three, four months, again, where the best coins were break even and the majority were at a loss. Okay, so there still is potential. We have an even greater opportunity, but I'm definitely, my eyes are definitely paying attention. Okay, so just stuff to keep in mind. Again, with another example with Nexa, I forgot to mention this, was just, you know, there's sites like the Coin Perspective or Coin Market Cap of, or it's another easy way just to see potential of coins, right? Compare the market cap of a certain coin. I like to use Raven, because again, Raven is just kind of there. I'm not bullish on it, but to me, that's kind of like, I think it'll meet Raven's market cap, okay? So even if Nexa were to just meet Raven's coin, and this is Ravencoin's current market cap. Just understand that if the entire market goes up like we think it will in the next six, 12 months, then it's gonna go up even more beyond that. Okay, so even if it currently just reaches where Ravencoin is at right now, it's a freaking 17X. And I feel pretty good at, about it at least reaching that market cap come the peak of the bull market, okay? So again, it's totally up to you. I'm not saying that one way is better than the other, just that there's times where one for me is definitely a signal to do one more so than the other, especially for you guys that are on a smaller scale like me. Okay, so it just depends on your operation. For those of you guys who have like two, 300 cards, then yes, just flip that switch, turn those bad boys on. Okay, if you're willing to spec, I mean, again, that's gonna be a crazy ass electric bill too. <laughs> but I mean, that's about what I'm paying for mine is just, again, I have a small amount of GPUs, but it's big on the ASICs. Those ASICs eat up a lot of that electric. Okay, so different things to look at. I know it feels doom and gloom, but this is why you diversify. This is a big part of the reason last year we decided to get those FPGAs, like the E100 is still gonna be doing good. That little Casper thing is gonna be doing all right, just cause again, it's gonna be profitable still. Okay, but it doesn't happen all the time, right? Like with the, the M2 is a good example, a little mole miner, that thing is gonna be unplugged here today. I was hoping that this FPGA or ASA guy was only gonna be on a few days or something, but <laughs> I think he's going to be up for a little while. So I will be unplugging that guy. Um, and this is another good plug for those D-pin projects, projects that don't use any electric, have no overhead, right? So my, like, my little Helium Mobile Miners, the Hive Mapper, Natix, GeoNet, whatever you're doing, again, those are all extremely good gainers. And these are the best, best examples of why, because you're not going to be unplugging those. Those things don't use any electric. It's all profit, okay? So things to consider, especially if it stays like this for a while because there is a chance that maybe we do stay in this range. Maybe we do bounce at 59.5 and just hover 60 to 64 for the next three months. Or maybe something bullish happens and we go up to 90K next month, right? We really don't know all we can do is speculate and when it does seem like there's good opportunities to either buy or mine or buy hardware, however you wanna stack coins. Again, the biggest thing for me, stacking coins so through mining, through DeFi, airdrop farming, whatever means, okay? Just stack, 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 continue to grow, whatever capacity, right? For me lately, it's been 
airdrop farming and these deep pin things and that has allowed me to continue to grow at a pretty good rate okay so certain things are coming to an end like airdrop farming a lot of the big ones i've been waiting for we're starting to get our allocations for which is extremely nice but now it's determining what to do beyond that okay and for me right now if things continue this way it's gonna probably be buying right i'm gonna dip into the hardware fund that I had reserved and I'll probably just be buying coins, right? Just depends on where the opportunities are. Hopefully things stay this way and those hardware cost prices also go down. Who knows, right? So we're going to keep our eye on the market, especially on that big orange thing and see what it does, see where it goes, because this is what's going to determine the rest of the market. Okay, right now the current trend we're on isn't looking good, but again, that means opportunity. Okay, we're getting another opportunity that we had early last year. Okay, we'll see how big of an opportunity is. Maybe it's just short term. Maybe this is it. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully we continue to go lower. Okay, so again, I'm not a bear, but hopefully it makes more sense as to why I do want lower prices, at least for now, right? If it's 12 months from now and this is the trend we're at, <laughs> gonna be screwed, bros. But that's why also you have to be smart with it. That doesn't mean like, go all in or do whatever it has to be money that you're comfortable losing right and at this point everything i've built everything i've like grown into if it goes to zero goes to zero won't really affect me at all right do i think that's going to happen obviously not right so far it has played out extremely extremely well and we'll see if that lucky streak continues right so let me know what you guys are doing, bros. Are you guys doom and gloom? Did you guys already sell all your 3060 Ti's and 3070's for 20 bucks? Sell them to me. By the way, I'll pick them all up at $20. I'll pick up your Octo Miners at 50. Let me know, because I know a lot of you guys are crying about it, but <laughs> let me know what you guys are doing. Do you guys see things similarly? Are you guys hoping for lower prices? Or are you guys super paranoid hopefully some of you guys caught that like don't f this up video because that's one of the things we talked about is the, don't be surprised if your whole portfolio just overnight gets cut 50 percent right and this is one of those times where in some cases if you're all coin heavy it did and it can go down another 50 percent another 20 percent and continue to go down right realistically again my goal is 2025 okay right now it's just stacking it's adding focusing on yield focusing on the amount of coins and what those coins will potentially be worth that's why I like the fiat profitability i don't care and that's why i highly recommend don't focus on that like i see people going through like mind the asic and like oh that's crap oh i feel bad for them it's still getting the same amount of yield okay yes the coin price went down so the fiat profitability went down but that's why you shouldn't be concerned with that you should be concerned with the yield you're getting guys focus 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 on that so stay focused, guys. I know it seems doom and gloom, and you're going to continue to see it. You're going to continue to see everybody. I told you GPU mining was dead. You're stupid, blah, blah, blah. And it's, again, we heard that for six to eight months straight, right? And after we had these 10, 20, 30, 40 Xs, it's like, who's laughing now? Okay, so again, it's all on your thing. Things can get worse. BTC can go down to 30, and some of these coins can go down to a fraction of what they are now. But stay focused. Keep your eyes on the prize, guys. All right, I want another round. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know in the comments, guys, what you guys think. Thank you for watching, guys, and I am out.